previously we were uh, uh, looking at the various uh, types of uh, neural networks as a part of machine learning and uh, we also have considered a few of the very fundamental uh, what you call learning rules uh, just to get uh, along with the concepts of uh, what you call uh, the artificial neural networks right so now we'll go one step ahead uh, and we'll try to uh, implement slightly uh, advanced uh, what you call, uh, learning rule okay uh, just before that uh, let's uh, look at the uh, fundamentals so uh, whatever we were looking at this in in the previous classes uh, let's try to recall something okay this is uh, important so uh, in the beginning we looked at the diagram uh, which is a, a basic diagram of uh, how a machine learning uh, project can be implemented in general okay so uh, let, let's just look at that now so this was one such uh, diagram uh, which gives you an idea that uh, how we implement any of the machine learning algorithm here it is specifically about the neural network so on the top you can see first phase is a training phase where we give input data we train the uh, network using a specific learning rule right and uh, at the end of training we get what is called as a trained neural network that's what is at the center okay so you have to have some training data you have to select a training rule followed by uh, perform a training using some algorithm and once you finish that then you get a trained neural network in other cases you get a trained model when it comes to any of the machine learning algorithm so replace the machine learning algorithm by neural network it's a concept of neural networks right so then we go for a testing phase in a testing phase i just want to check whether the machine learning or the machine learning model or the uh, neural network model which we have trained so far is uh, has learned something or not if it has learned how good it is right so our objective is that <laughs> all right so just to verify that what we do we go for a second phase that is called as a testing phase and in the testing phase give some input data to the network right that is going to generate an output right you check whether that output is correct or not if it is correct it's a positive score for you if it is not correct then it means right there is some issue with the training maybe you opt for another level of training or add more training data change your learning rule etc we can do a lot of uh, uh, processing over here a lot of coding over here just to make changes with that so this was the first thing we uh, uh, learned right moving on then we uh, looked at the nodes of a neural network right so when we uh, when i say a neural network the neural network will have what you call as nodes right how do you relate that node with the human brain this is what was the next thing how to compare so this comparison is possible right uh, by doing a an analogy which is like this right i'll just uh, uh, show you another diagram now that's going to make things more clear for us okay so that is so we have compared the human brain with the neural network using this right we can see that uh, the human brain is a neuron right the smallest cell is a neuron which actually is capable of performing uh, it's the smallest uh, entity which is able to perform some sort of calculations right some sort of information processing whereas when it comes to the neural network we know that the node is an element which can perform the calculation right so in the brain you have connections of neuron here we have connection using weights each node can be connected using several sorts of what you call weights 
okay so we use weights as a the weights and bias right anyway uh, bias is not mentioned here but obviously bias is also required okay then let's go ahead and uh, check the node representation right and uh, how the calculation happens inside a node that's what we are going to see okay now when i say the node and its representation we can see that the node can be represented in the following format so it actually has three inputs the, the circular shape what we are writing here is the node and we know that this node basically has the capability to take or read the inputs right so where are the inputs x1 x2 and x3 are the inputs okay at the same time this particular node is taking the inputs through weights so weights where the connections which we were talking about in the uh, in the previous diagram okay then we have to have a bias that's as an input so it uses all of them together to calculate the output all right so a node that receives three inputs can be represented in this particular format okay now how the calculation happens with respect to the output so actually i'll mark a uh, uh, output here which is say v okay let me mark a v here because this v has to be calculated first so how do you calculate a v v is equal to we know that it's actually w1 into x1 plus this is w2 x2 correct plus this is w3 x3 plus the bias it calculates all of them to get the v right in general uh, later on we are going to see that this can be represented in a linear matrix format as w x plus v right one and same okay again we know that in a matrix format if you want to write how do you write the weight matrix weight is nothing but w1 w2 and w and uh, what's the input matrix input is a column vector because when you multiply w into x i am supposed to get a single value so i have to satisfy the matrix condition matrix multiplication conditions all right so this should be x1 x2 x3 all right so this is how you calculate v v is actually an intermediate value and you convert v into y by using what is called as an activation function which is phi of v so this phi is the activation function all right fine so we have there a lot of options to decide uh, what activation function we are going to use okay that's fine so we'll move on to the next one that is the layers of uh, neural networks right which we have to consider so in general the representation is as follows okay if you want to consider the general architecture of a neural network then uh, what we had considered so far in our discussion is like this okay so that is so a diagram something something very similar to this we had considered right so let's look at this so you know that it has uh, three layers the layer number one is called as an input layer right which takes inputs so connections are optional you can connect input layer uh, then the calculation that can happen internally at a hidden layer followed by the output layer so the three layers which basically a neural network is expected to have are like this the input layer which collects the input right and the data processing will happen in the hidden layer and the final the last layers which could provide your output right of something less or something like the classification okay that happens with the output layer so these are the three layers uh, in general when we say the neural network is made up of structural layers 
right so this is a layer structure of a neural network right in terms of nodes nodes are uh, actually connected right in various formats to form various types of networks now depending upon the hidden layer size and the orientation of the hidden layer we have varieties of neural networks coming into picture all right so let's look at the neural network types uh, in the form of a table this is again a uh, we are trying to recall all right so we already have seen this i'll quickly go through this so here okay so this is the table which i was talking about so now we know that uh, the first type of uh, neural network layer uh, neural network has number of layers is equal to just one right so when i say the number of neural layers is one it means it has an input and output layer single layer neural network i'll uh, try to draw that here okay so that means uh, and uh, okay let, let me uh, try to uh, base that here or while we discuss about the other layers so one is called as a single layer neural network where we can see input and output only no hidden layers all right so that's the first type and then we have a second type coming up uh, the second type is actually called as a shallow or multi-layered neural network so in the multi-layer neural network right one type is shallow where the input layer and the output layers uh, at are in the middle we have a sandwiching layer which is called as a hidden layer all right so uh, we can see that uh, representation over here so the first one which we are discussing about the single layer neural network is this one so where you can see that one layer which is actually the direct input and output layers are connected nothing at the middle of these two and that is called as the single layer neural network then we went to the multi layer so we can see multiple layers over here so they are falling under the case called as uh, multi neural networks multiple layer neural networks so one is called as a shallow which has input one hidden layer and output you see input one hidden and output so this is called as a multi-layer neural network so some uh, the difference is in terms of layers again in in terms of the capabilities of solving the problem the single layer neural networks can solve linear problems whereas multiple uh, layers are required whenever our intention is to solve uh, something called as uh, non-linear problems we have already seen them and we are very assured of them so uh, and then we go for what is called as a deep neural network which has input layer and many hidden layers followed by output layer. You see, you see here this is one and I am showing two layers here and one. Okay, so that's more than two. Two or more than two will be considered as the deep neural network. Okay, so already we have seen that training a neural network corresponds to the uh, updation of weights. Right? optimum weights uh, identifying optimum weights for a given problem means that you have trained the neural network right whether it is uh, single layered whether it is shallow or multi layer right or it's a deep neural network the concept of training remains pretty much the same okay now let's uh, go for the mathematical representation this is this is what we have not considered so far so before going to the uh, next learning rule right we need to we need the representation as well uh, how to represent the problem in the form of a matrix is what we are going to see now all right so at a later stage this will help us in writing the matlab course as well all right so uh, now we'll start with the uh, representation of some problem Okay, using a neural network we'll see first and how to write a uh, matrix equivalent of that that's also required we'll do that 
we'll try to solve that and we'll try to give a representation in terms of uh, how to convert a multi-layer neural network into single layer neural network and right later on we'll definitely see that how to write the codes etc what are the various uh, technical terms associated with this right uh, everything we'll be trying to cover up okay uh, all right so now let's uh, consider a specific uh, what you call uh, neural network with a single hidden layer all right so uh, that should be the prob problem statement is like this i just want to calculate the outputs of uh, a neural network which is like this so consider this is our neural network Right, so input values are given. Right, uh, let us try to identify uh, the various components first. So, first one, this one, two, right, these two are the input values. There are how many hidden layers you can see? I have one hidden layer. <laughs> Sorry, this is the input layer, hidden layer, and output layer. Okay, so the input layer takes the inputs one and two provides it for the hidden layer. So the weights of this layer are one, uh, sorry, three, two, one, four, with the bias values as one, one, all right? So which means you uh, calculate output of the hidden layer and you may write the value output y, y1, y2 may, for, okay? That's maybe my our notation. y1, y2 will come at the output depending upon the activation function you choose, okay? then that will act as input to the next layer and this layer will once again process with these weights right and these biases to get your final outputs okay maybe that's that's a final value that comes here could be the y right so now our intention is that let's do some mathematics uh, of this how this is going to happen so instead of doing this every time solving like y1 y2 like uh, by considering the inputs and multiplying can we can we do it in a simpler way right uh, because uh, if you are able to represent this kind of problems in the matrix format it becomes very easy because matrix multiplications are pretty straightforward right we have to simply we, easily we can multiply uh, matrices even the program programs whatever we write right they are going to solve the problems in uh, matrix format which in a faster way rather than writing it in any other format such as polynomials or right okay uh, nonlinear equations or and like that okay so uh, for which uh, right now i need to first uh, identify what is the activation function that i am going to use okay for this for the time being so let the activation function that is phi of uh, x should be equal to x be the activation function okay this is a pure line right if you remember we had discussed various uh, uh, activation functions earlier so uh, this particular uh, representation phi of x equal to x is nothing but is a pure line okay it's a linear it's a linear one okay now let me uh, try to uh, consider the first part of the graph okay uh, first part of my neural uh, neural network and i want to calculate the output from the hidden layer right whatever that comes at the output of the hidden layer all right so let us calculate that but i'll i'll, I'll try to uh, since uh, it may not space may not be sufficient i'll try to copy what i'm doing okay so i'll write here so i my intention is to find the output of the hidden layer all right so that means uh, right now my intention is to calculate the output of only this part okay so that is i'll simply write uh, simply copy and paste that here so that you can uh, refer okay so this only this part this is my layer and i'm trying to calculate the output of this part of the graph 
All right, so let's do a quick uh, uh, mathematics now. So how do you, uh, first let's do this. Let's do the normal way. So what is the weighted sum of uh, our uh, top half of the graph, right? So first note, what is this output? Maybe I, I'll, I'll denote that as y1, possible. Okay, maybe this is y1, right? And I'll call this is say y2. Okay, so before the y1, let me call that there is a value v which comes as output. So v is equal to, right, input into a weight, correct? So this should be 3 into 1, w1, x1, plus uh, 1 into 2, okay? So 3 into 1, this 1 into 2, plus the weight, okay? So this is just... Uh, to recall what we used to do, then later on we are going to find the easiest way to represent, do this. Okay, so this comes to be 6 at least, right? So 3 plus 2 plus 1. And uh, we know that the output, say, y1 is equal to phi of uh, v, right? That is equal to v itself. So, right, I'll call this as v1. Phi of v1 is v1, so that is equal to 6. So output y1 equal to 6. All right, so I'll just make a note of this so y1 is equal to 6 similarly calculate the y2 now so before y2 i'll calculate v2 so what is v2 i think that is 2 into 1 plus 4 into 2 plus 1 so this is equal to 11 right just to show that this right and this they are coming to the second one plus the weight. So 2 into 1 and 2 into 4 plus 1. Okay, so we got the, the output at uh, as a V2. The value is equal to 11. And uh, I know that the Y2 is nothing but so the phi of V2. Correct? That is equal to V2 itself. Right? So that is also 11. Okay, now... So is it possible to convert this into a matrix format so that we can do simple matrix multiplication and get the answers, right? So answer is yes. Let's si si simply uh, find out. So first, V1, V2 can be calculated using this method. I'll write a matrix. So this is uh, V1 and V2. V1 and V2 equals to, so first you write, Right. Uh, okay. Let let me write what I did so far. You can see that uh, in both these equations, see this is one, and this two. They are common for both. Correct. Because that's the input. Input is common for both nodes you are considering. Correct. So what we can do uh, first, let me write the equation as it is inside them. Then I will try to extract what I need from them. So in the first, uh, in the calculation of v one. This was my equation, that is 3 into 1 plus uh, 1 into 2 plus 1, okay? Uh, below I had to write a 2 into 1 plus 4 into 2 plus 1. This was my equation. So I'll split this. So just see this, uh, that 1 into 2 and whatever I add as a plus part, right? The plus part I'll definitely try to uh, separate. So I'll try to write it in this way. So this is 3 into 1 plus 1 into 2 and uh, 2 into 1 plus 4 into 2, right? Plus this is 1, 1, correct? So you can, you can understand that this is the bias of the first one. So that is this one. And this, this is the second bias, which is B2. That is this one. Okay, right. So I can separate the bias and I can write the bias as a vector. That's what is my conclusion. If I have multiple biases, right, for each of the node, I can write it as a vector. So this is this is the vector that is arising as a bias. I come to know. So I can separate it and I can write it in a different one before I, uh, in, in a matrix format if I want to simplify. I'll go further. So in the next step, what I do here, I'll try to separate these ones and the twos. Okay, 
So if that is my condition, then I'm supposed to do it in the following fashion. So three, one, okay, three, one, and two, four. I'll separate and I'll multiply this in with one and two, right? Just check three and one get multiplied with one and two. With that, I'm going to add one. Right, so that is my top line, right? The first line of the uh, matrix multiplication. All right, and what, what I did in the second line again, two into uh, one and uh, four into two, right? So plus one, one. So now I can try to represent that. This was a weight matrix. This is the input matrix. Plus, this is the bias matrix to get V. So, uh, this is what I wrote earlier when I said that this is our actual representation. So, V is equal to W, X plus V can actually be written even in the matrix format, and even the matrix format holds good for that. Right? So, this is what we understood so far. And right in general let's let's compare this with our problem uh, if i try to let me just paste it over here so that we can refer it so you can see now the three and two are the if you write it in a vertical format right that is the weight that is actually input from the input layer whatever is going out right whichever is easier you can you can take it in that way right vertically if you go along the weight matrix you are going to look at the the weights of right every layer that is actually for the from the first node first input node to output right to the next layer whatever is the connection you can write it in a vertical fashion if the looking at the vertical fashion is difficult then we have an alternative option that is you you look horizontally so if i look horizontally row wise that is actually the input to every layer so three and one are are the weights of the inputs that is coming to the first layer okay first node of the layer and the whatever you write in the second uh, row right the second row of that uh, weight matrix it corresponds to that is two and four if you observe two and four right the second row corresponds to the weights of those arrow marks weights of the connections that is coming to the second node of that particular layer whose output you are calculating all right so it's left to you so uh, it's left to you to uh, keep track of how you uh, feel about the representation of the weight matrix followed by inputs right input one and two i'll write one and two it's a vertical no so it's a column format so i prefer uh, remembering in the column format every column is what i try to remember so so the column of every column of the weight vector corresponds to the output right of a previous layer to that layer right so when i write three comma two or three two in a vertical in a column of a matrix so from the previous one three goes to the first one two goes to the second one right at the same time from the second node of the input right one is the weight of the uh, line connecting to the first node of next layer and the four corresponds to the second node of the next layer so this is this is a easier way to remember as i uh, easy to remember and understand according to Okay, definitely you can go ahead with the row wise notations as well. Okay, so this if you if you do this matrix multiplication, let's quickly do this. Okay, so calculate what comes at the output. <coughs> Sorry, so this is 3 into 1 plus 2 into uh, uh, 1 plus 1. So that is 6 and uh, 2 into 1, 4 into 2 plus 1. Again, I think that is 11, right? Now you have to perform only one thing, that is the outputs, y1 and y2. 
nothing but you apply the sigma of uh, sigma or phi of uh, uh, I think v1 and v2 was our notation. Let me write that v1 and phi of v2, right? So right, do this in another matrix, uh, another calculation separately. So phi of v1 is v1, phi of v2 is v2. So that is six and nine. So you got the output state form, right? So instead of doing these many calculations, right, like this, right? So every uh, output you don't have to calculate. Simply uh, get adjusted with the matrix representation of the corresponding neural network. Enter the weights and the biases properly, right? Give the inputs and calculate the output. So this matrix uh, representation may become a, even a larger matrix, okay? Because it, if I have five uh, neuro neurons inside a layer, right? It can become five into five matrix, right? But that's still easier, that's still quicker compared to the normal multiplication, what we can do. All right, so now we just have calculated the outputs of only, uh, what you call, uh, only uh, outputs of only one layer we calculated, correct? Now we have to do the same thing with, rest, with the second one. Okay, so let's do that. So I'll quickly try to copy that part. What we are going to do now, I'll just show you. So we are considering this as the part of the neural uh, network to calculate the output. Okay, this is what we are uh, considering now. Okay, so we have the inputs coming up. So inputs are already calculated. If you remember, this was a six and uh, this was 11, I'll write outside. Okay, this is 11 and uh, this is six. So six and 11, All right. Now, uh, don't, let's not do the, what you call normal method. Directly we'll go to the matrix method, right? So write the, directly write the, uh, let's write the equation. So V is equal to W into X plus B. So V, how many V's you have? It's, it corresponds to how many outputs you have, correct? Two outputs are expected. So I am expecting V1, V2. Okay, so V1, V2 should be equal to, write the W matrix. So follow any notation, right? Either you look row wise, low, row wise indicates that weights of the first node, right? Weight that is coming into the first node can be considered as the, uh, in the horizontal fashion, right? Or vertical fashion, the, you have to look from what is the uh, inputs, right? From the input side, if you see, it is, right, column wise. Row wise should be the, towards the output side. If I look at this, it should be three comma two, that will be a row wise. Okay, if you look at uh, the column of this matrix, then I should write three, five in a column. Okay, so let me write. So I prefer looking at a column wise. So three and five for the first one, two and one for the second. Then give the input. First input is six, next input is 11. Okay, plus this is one and one as the bias. So we get, uh, 41 and 42 as V and the output Y is equal to phi of V which is equal to V that's why final outputs are also 41 42 All right. so easily we can do that right now let's look at uh, this is this was a uh, neural network with uh, one hidden layer correct so can we convert this into a uh, single layer neural network is it possible let's check that okay so this is something like i'm doing a reverse engineering so uh, i know that the final output the v was calculated as three two five one into the previous layers output that was uh, uh, what was the previous output six and eleven right plus the current bias that is one one okay now i will try to replace uh, 6 and 11 
by using the previous layers representation in matrix form. So that was 3, 2, 5, 1. This is as it is. Okay. Only the 6, 11, I'll try to write it as, I know that it was calculated using the previous layers weights and the biases and the previous layer inputs. Correct. So this was 3, 1, 2, 4. And I think we had the inputs as 1 and 2 plus the previous layer biases, correct? This was uh, 1, 1. This is the representation of simply 6 and 11. This 6 and 11 is this much. All right. So plus, let's add the bias of the current layer. Okay. Now, I know that this can be multiplied, correct? The This is like, this is A, right? This is B plus C. Right, A into B plus C is A into B plus A into C. I can do that, right? So let's quickly uh, try to convert that. Now. So that means I'll write in this way. Okay, so three, two, five, one into three, one, two, four into 1, 2, plus 3, 2, 5, 1, into 1, 1, plus 1, 1. Okay, now, uh, yeah, okay, so now what we do now, uh, Let's keep the first inputs. This this is the first input, correct? This is the first input to the whole neural network. Let's keep it as it is, right? So simplify this and give me one answer. 13, 11, 17, and 9. Okay, All right. So plus, let's do the, okay, you simplify this completely because when I multiply, I'm going to get a 2 into 1. I can add another 2 into 1 to it. So simplify this and give me a single 2 into 1 matrix. So this is 6, this is 7. Now you consider this is something like Wx plus b, right? I'm actually cal calculating the final output now, directly using a single this thing. So what I mean is this whole network can be represented in the following fashion, right? I had a hidden layer, right? I, I can actually eliminate the hidden layer and I can try to represent the equivalent of that hidden uh, or the multiple layered neural network right, into a simple single layered neural network like this. So this is what uh, we mean when we said they are equivalent. All right, so it's one and C. Okay, all right. So again, this is this was just an example. If we have the weights and biases with us, how do you how do you right uh, do the mathematics in a quicker fashion by using the matrix representation? And using the matrix representation, it is even possible to uh, come to a conclusion that our multiple uh, layered neural networks right can actually be reduced into a simple neural network or a single layered neural network. Right, single layer neural networks are pretty straightforward, that's why. Okay, all right. So, the next uh, thing is we will look at the uh, learning rules. We have never introduced the required terms so far, but now we will bring them into picture because when we go for uh, uh, the complicated learning algorithms, there uh, we need to distinguish among them, so we have to uh, know the their names properly. So the first types of learning rules are for going to follow under a category called as supervised. Supervised learning rules. Right. So supervised learning rule as the name suggests there is, you are going to supervise the machine's learning process, right? You teach the machine, machine will give you an answer, 
then you will tell the machine whether it is correct or not just recall all the learning rules we considered earlier right so in each and every learning rule there was uh, we used what is called as a target correct every time you train the machine you compare the result of the machine with the target correct if the target is not equal to uh, the output you actually did something right that is a super that's what is the supervision right so under the supervision of right a target values you actually train the network right if the target and the output are equal no need to teach something if it is not that then you need to teach right right then then the machine has to you see that concept is what is called as the supervised learning rule right so in the sense there is something called as an error 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 indicate error was basically indicated by uh, the output differing right output that is differing from the target so let's quickly uh, show you let me quickly show you one uh, diagram uh, that actually uh, is the easiest representation of uh, the supervised learning rule So just see here, we had some training data and uh, the training data actually consists of a part of uh, or the complete inputs which we give uh, for the machine to train, indicating that machine will uh, learn something in terms of updating the weights and the bias. So that is what is the input to the network network will calculate an output right so when the output comes you are going to compare that output with the correct output you see this is the target right so correct output could be our target so compare it with the target if there is a if they are not equal right how do you find out they are not equal simply subtract in mathematics you subtract so target minus output if it is zero you see error becomes equal to zero right in the sense how do you identify whether target and output are same subtract them and check it is zero if it is zero don't do anything weights are fine okay if error is not zero right if error is not equal to zero then it means i have to update the weights so updation of weight happens according to certain algorithm right that is what is a training rule all the training rules which we have studied so far are following under are falling under this case only right where we had a target value we compared with the target and then we updated the weights depending upon certain condition okay so this whole thing is called as the concept of supervised learning fine okay now let us go to the another a learning rule this is one of the uh, slightly advanced learning rule under the supervised case okay so this is what is called as the delta learning rule okay so uh, we have understood that the neural network is going to store the information in the form of weights right weight is the one which actually is the storage of information right whenever input comes it will multiply by the weights it performs some modification adds a bias to that and it gives you an output okay so a systematic approach of modification of the weights according to the information is the learning rule so uh, since the training is the only way for the neural network to store that information in very systematic fashion right so uh, learning rule is actually a vital uh, what you call component of our process of uh, neural network approach all right so uh, we are going to uh, learn a new learning rule called as a delta learning rule right it is right uh, the representation of learning in terms of uh, a single layered uh, neural network okay so let us consider a neural network again i'll 
copy a diagram. So let us consider a simple single layered neural network that is that looks like this. Okay, All right. Let us say that uh, uh, we have the error signal that is being calculated. Error at the ith stage can be defined as this is p i minus say y i. Okay, so here uh, this p uh, i is basically the correct output. I. All right. <laughs> right. If uh, so, the idea is that if a node contributes to the error of the output node, the weight between the two nodes is adjusted in proportional to the input value xi and the output value ei. So, for example, if the, the rule is very simple, so if this particular node, right, is generating an output error, right, that means these all the weights of this particular layer needs to be adjusted. All the weights that comes to this particular layer, right, this particular node needs to be adjusted, right. So, in other words, if a input node contributes to the error of the output node weight between the those two nodes needs to be adjusted right and that adjustment is basically proportional to the input value and the error value right more error more adjustment less error less adjustment okay so that is our basic idea in the uh, delta learning So, so what is the equation? Let's write the equation here. It says W i j is equal to, right? The W i j plus see the alpha value, the error value into the x value. All right. So see the notation. Here we are calling i. This is a j. So, Wij represents which output to which input. Okay, Ij is J is input, I is, uh, sorry, J is out, uh, my mistake, J is input, you can see J written here, I is the output. Okay, fine. So, using this, we can actually learn something. Now, so let me try to write the components here. So this is xj is the output from the input node j. So the j values could be uh, maybe I can write J is 1, 2, 3, etc. So EI is the, uh, the error output node I. Again, I can change from 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay. Then the WIJ is the weight. That is weight between output node i, output node i and input node j. Okay, and 
alpha is called as the learning the learning rate normally between 0 to 1 0 means no learning so we we don't prefer that so that's why it is 0 less than alpha alpha is not kept as equal to this okay now so let us try to uh, represent uh, this using a single layer neural network with the three inputs node and one output node then if i'm considering uh, that kind of representation then this is the straightforward representation of that so the same concept in this fashion where here you can see that the error e1 is equal to desired value t1 is y1 right if the error exists right then i am going to right update the weights so how do you update the weights so something like w11 is equal to w11 plus alpha e1 x1 so weight is updated according to the error amount and the input right given Correct. So similarly, W I can do W12 is equal to old value plus alpha E1 into X2. Right? Similarly, W13 is equal to W old value plus alpha into E1 into X3. So the weight of that particular node will be adjusted in such a way that what is the error amount and what is the input given to that. So that's the concept of delta learning rule, right? How much is the error, right? Depending on that, you update the weight, right? So in uh, general, right, even the, the second part is actually represented in this way. So it is, it, it can be, calculated as w11 plus delta w11 okay this could be w12 plus delta w12 and i can also write this as w13 plus delta w13 where delta w13 is nothing but alpha into e1 into x3 All right, so let's uh, write a general, uh, let me write a general diagram that actually represents the, the complete concept we discussed so far. All right, so you can see here, left hand side I have the training data which is coming as input and the correct output so out of which the correct output will come at the bottom as a D and the training data will go to the input you train right you get an output use a WIJ to get the output Y compare that Y with the D right so subtract error is equal to D minus Y and depending upon the E value, if E is there, then only the, the updation will happen. Otherwise, delta Wij will be zero. So when the delta Wij is zero, you don't update. If there is E means according to the E value, the magnitude of error, you update. Okay, so this is the uh, representation of the whole concept of what is called as the delta learning rule.